Okay, we're back. Tape number eight here. Okay, uh, last we were taken off with here, we had Manera in tow on our 76th contact on Monday, May 23rd, 1977. And he'd been asking uh, Manera where Simyasi was, and uh, she said that, well, she'd been gone, she was staying away so as not to interfere with the development of the new community and the new house. Because Simyasi had a way of always wanting to be involved in everything, which is getting too close to Billy and the other people. So she felt it best that she stay away for a while. And it had been about three months. Manera warns Billy that the Bafath are causing more problems, and they are getting ready to do something. They're very concerned about um, uh, Billy building the center and founding a center for spiritual growth and truth. And they're very concerned about the security. She says also to find out that many members of uh, Billy's group are being influenced by the FAF already, that they are projecting thoughts into their subconscious, unable to defend themselves and discern where these thoughts are coming from. Already many members of the group um, are finding themselves influenced by this and developing wrong thinking. And that certainly would explain, Billy says, why we're having so many problems in the group, so many arguments and egos are flying all over the place. Some of the members want to be commanders and leaders and think they're better than the other people. The irony is that none of these people in previous lives uh, have, have been any person of particular note or value. They were just housewives, potters, etc. But they're all acting like now that suddenly they're very, very important to the mission and that the earth just can't get along without them. Well, Billy uh, has returned home and... Uh, he had been gone actually for about an hour or so, but she put him back uh, so it only looked like he'd been gone about 15 minutes. Because when he left, everybody was working on the house, and they saw him walk away to the east and leave. And now, uh, 15 minutes later, he pops back coming up from the west, and it would have been impossible for him to actually get around to this location that fast. Uh, because of the terrain there, he would have had to have gone like, you know, uh, clear around a hill, and uh, there's no roadways or anything for transportation. So it would have been impossible for him to actually come back from that direction, uh, except for the fact that Manera moved in time. The 77th contact was on Tuesday, May 31st, uh, 1977. Pata at this time tells Billy that they're, after listening to the thoughts of many of the members in the group after they've been working together for several months, that there are certain members of the group who are just not going to make it in this community. There are problems with some of them, uh, uh, massive egos where they think they're too much better than the other people. There are some people also have very self, low self-esteem, insecurity complexes, which won't be able to get along in a community atmosphere. Sounds kind of normal already, doesn't it? So they've been monitoring their thoughts for about three months, and Pata admits they're not too sure exactly how to advise Billy about this. So they turned the information over to the High Council, hoping they would come up with something. Pata again warns Billy about the evil of the Bafath and for security. He tells him that there are very difficult times ahead, and during the next 12 months there's going to be lots of difficulties in the group. Some of the group members may actually desert and leave. The next contact is on the 78th contact, which is Wednesday, July 6th in 77. Hey. At this contact, Manera shows up with Alina. Alina is a Lyrian. She's from a planet called Sater, S-A-T-E-R, in the constellation Lyra. It's 157.3 million light years uh, away from us. And their son's name is Mel. Some of these names just crack me. Up. Here's a son named Mel. You know, we'll have a planet named Bob and a, you know, <laughs> a moon named Nancy or something. I love these names. Um, the interesting part was that Billy once before, when uh, when Manera, when he had a contact and first met Manera, he was able to play with her beam ship. I mean, her beam pistol and uh, has some pictures with that. Alina brings him a gun also, and he's able to take pictures of Alina's arm and uh, body and so forth, but he has to black out the face on the negatives, which he does. And he gets to shoot a few holes in trees and twigs and things. And this is um, an old uh, gun that she has. It's about 600 years old. 
and there are a few pictures of it around. I show it at talks every now and then. It has two little boxes on it, and when you pull the trigger, the two boxes, I call them boxes, are just little containers on the gun that control certain radiations. And when you pull the trigger, uh, it just dissolves things. There's no sound or light, but uh, anything within a range of 37.2 kilometers just dissolves without a trace. Only that par uh, place where it first hits something is there like a carbonizing or a little burn mark there when it first hits something. She says also on this weapon, uh, if you pull the trigger back farther, uh, that it releases only the front box where the two uh, elements don't mix together and it has like a self-defense mechanism. It doesn't kill someone. It has the effect of like uh, drugging them or knocking them out somehow. Their newer weapons are much more advanced, she says. They're far, far smaller, and they're also connected to the brain waves of the person who owns the weapon. Only that person could actually fire the weapon, and it's more sophisticated where it, you can actually almost think what you want the weapon to do, what you want it to hit, and it will just aim at it and fire for you. So it's far more sophisticated, but they didn't have one of those with, for uh, Billy to play with. Billy asked about her ship. I uh, wanted to know a little bit about uh, uh, Monera's ship because he noticed the animals didn't run away when the beam ship came. And she commented, well, my ship is not a beam ship uh, like uh, Semyasi's is. It's a different kind of ship, and it works off a different principle. It's not a beam ship, so it doesn't produce these electromagnetic vibrations and oscillations that the animals can pick up. Her ship flies by what she called a densification of atmospheric gases. These gases are then compressed and exhausted somehow. So it sounds almost like a rocket sort of thing, where uh, some sort of sophisticated system of gas pressure that they use. She says it cannot fly in outer space. It was just designed uh, to be used in atmosphere around planets. So a little different ship here. Manera and Alina spend a little time praising Billy uh, about how well he knows so many different forms of manual work, carpentry, electrician, and so forth. And they keep a lot of praise again on him about being such a logical thinker and so advanced and so different than all the rest of us earthworms. So, Again, all through the contact notes, uh, Billy is constantly being praised and you know, kind of patted on the head and told how good he is. And It's obvious by this time that, you know, they're doing this all the time to keep his spirits up, keep him going, keep him on his mission. Uh, it's just a constant thing all the time. The 79th contact was on Saturday, July 26th, 77. Billy's not feeling very well, and he thinks that he's been poisoned from some sausage. Sinyasi has returned, and he's having a contact with her, and she says it's not food poisoning. And she brings him into the ship for an examination, and right away uses some little device which reveals in his blood that there are some sort of parasites inside of him. She gets excited right away and she pulls some little device out that she puts next to the skin and uh, turns it on and takes about six seconds and she says, there, now all parasites have been eliminated from your body. At the moment your body, body is totally free of any disease and any parasites. So I'd sure love to have one of those little devices. Um, she warns Billy that uh, something's gone wrong here and she can't understand, you know, uh, where these parasites have come from, so she's going to look into it. She also, on that contact, warns Billy that there are very dangerous egos forming in the group, which are going to cause a lot of problems for him, and it's going to make it very difficult for the group to come together. Billy asks if uh, Quetzal is going to go through with his promise of a demonstration of the ships for the rest of the group, and uh, she says that this time, well, he had planned to, but he is so concerned by all of the ego, jealousy, and anger that's raging in the group trying to form this community that he's going to hold off on that, and he'll let Billy know later on. On the 80th contact, which was Wednesday, August 24th, 1977, Simyasi is moving her ship next to a tree to meet Billy when she picks up really strong feelings of pain from Billy. Well, this is kind of a surprise to her. She's never felt this before. Something's wrong. So she reacts kind of quickly, kind of quickly, and uh, pulls the ship away real quickly and causes the top of the tree to be uh, damaged, which uh, later on she moves the tree so it uh, what did not exist in a time when it could get hurt. But she's hurt this tree, and she's feeling bad about that. So she goes back and reports to Quetzal that something's wrong with Billy. They look into it and find that Billy had been attacked by some little critters. Apparently, these Bafaf guys had put uh, some mechanical 
looking little bugs in a tree on Billy's property. The little mechanical bugs, whatever they were, would fly around letting out some sort of bacteria in the air. And this is what was poisoning Billy and causing his thinking to change. Apparently everybody at the community, at the group there, uh, this bacteria had gotten into them also. So this might explain a little bit why they're having trouble getting along. The outshot of it was that Simyasi says we're going to destroy all these little bugs in the tree where that's coming from. And Billy says, how are you going to do this? And she says, well, I use this device here in the ship. It's, it's kind of like a beam device, like those pistols you played with. But we can control the intensity of it and how far, you know, the range is. And Billy says, can I give it a try? She says, surely, okay, let me show you how to work it. And she's explaining a little bit about it, how you move this device and for aiming, and you move this little handle here and so forth to make it work. And she's about, she says, I'm 38 meters uh, from the tree. Let me move in a little bit closer. And as she's moving the ship, Billy goes ahead and fires. And she gets a little excited, like, what have you done? Wait, wait, wait a minute. I haven't uh, got to stop the ship yet. He says, that's okay. It's all done. And she looks, and she's very surprised that he had figured out how to use the equipment so easily, and he'd accomplished the task so simply. And he says, it's really no big deal. It's a very simple device, and anybody living on Earth who's used to messing with mechanical mechanisms could figure this thing out very simply. Probably all these kids we had that play video games would have figured it out in a flash. But she was a little surprised because they're not used to doing mechanical things, and when that device is installed in the ship, she says it normally takes them an hour or two to be checked out on and trained how to use it. So apparently they're not too mechanical-minded. They probably have uh, droids and things that do so much for them that they're just not used to figuring things out on their own. On the uh, 81st contact, which was Sunday, September 4th, uh, 1977, uh, a rather unusual thing has happened. Apparently the Bafath have shot at Billy's house. Apparently what has happened, they've aligned themselves with some ETs from the Pegasus system, uh, who are really rather kind of wicked uh, in thinking, apparently. These beings have a weapon somehow that takes thought energy, concentrates it, they can aim it at something, and it causes vibration, vibrational oscillations that cause matter to break down. And they've actually fired at the back of Billy's house and destroyed part of the wall on the back of Billy's house. Well, Billy uh, listens to the explanation of how it worked and who did it, and he's kind of upset, but he doesn't seem to be as upset as Semyasi is. Uh, the outshot of it was that Quetzal uh, stations a telemeter device over Billy's house for security so they'll know if any of the Bafath ships come around again. They repair the wall, by the way, and make it even stronger, and Billy's making jokes about, uh, will this wall now stand up to those Bafath knaves? And, uh, but uh, the humor again escaped Semyasi. She did announce to him that early when she was explaining about the effects of the Bermuda Triangle and the two giant suns whose radiations were causing the effects, that the Earth had moved out of a position where it was now affected by those. It was no longer affected by those radiations. So the effects of the Bermuda Triangle as far as radiations from these suns causing time movement uh, is over as of July 10th, uh, 77. It's still possible that there could be other events there, but it wouldn't be caused by these radiation effects. Uh, some of the effects in the Bermuda Triangle and the Japanese Devil Sea, as they call it, and around Madagascar are also caused by magnetic storms on Earth, climate changes, crime, etc. Not all events were actually caused by the time war. Well, an interesting thing is happening at the community. The rules for living at the community are being drawn up. I've read them. I, I was uh, a member for a brief time. I was called a special member because I didn't live there, and uh, I was member number 50 for a while, a year or so. And uh, so I had a copy of the rules, and they are very strict for the current group who lives there. In effect, you live only for the community. You cannot think uh, outside of the community or against any interest. In other words, open-mindedness is kind of suppressed in a way. It's a very strict community. Far too strict for me. It was very good that I didn't live there. I wasn't able to conform to the rules anyway, even living over here in America, which uh, led me to uh, you know, resign myself and quit doing that. So Anyway, the rules are drawn up, and the community is actually forming. Uh, Billy has given plans to build their meditation room, uh, which they're going to do. Uh, Billy's... Uh, 
has a, spa a place over there called the meditation room where they've built a pyramid exactly to the specifications given to them by Fatah. And as a regular practice, all of the member 